Uh, the main idea behind the project that you're going to see is that uh, unfortunately so far there is miscommunication or no communication between the photovoltaic industry and the researchers, you, that you're developing the cells. So we would like to be able to come to you and ask, uh, define the properties of photovoltaic technologies that will be easily adapted from the building industry. And at the same time, we want to hear from you what you're able to do and we're not, what you're not able to do so we can adapt our designs based on the technologies that you're having. So remote and so just to give you a little idea, a small introduction about uh, what is going on in Canada right now. Uh, the map you see here was developed by Climate Energy, Enercan, Canada. And you see that we're quite sunny country, uh, especially when it comes to prairies and the area of Montreal, Ottawa. Uh, the beauty of our decade is that right now we have a building boom, uh, and especially uh, focusing on Toronto for high-rise buildings. And probably the most of you, you're familiar that we have these huge towers all over the place, Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, we see some in Mississauga, and they're covered from 50 all the way to 90% with glass. Uh, the, the Council of High-Rise Buildings estimates by 2016 we're going to have more than 74 buildings above 150 meters. That puts Canada number three in the world of most of the tallest buildings in the world. And again, think that these buildings are fully or partly glazed and unobstructed. Um, in order to give you a better idea of how sunny we are, uh, you see here uh, the red one is highlighted for Canadian cities and blue is USA. So you can see again uh, prairies that are quite sunny. Uh, Montreal and Whitehorse are sunnier than Miami. Uh, and that is for south-facing facade uh, vertical surfaces. So you can see the potentials of being able to cover uh, new buildings with semi-transparent PVs or retrofitting existing buildings. Because right now there is a big issue, in, especially in Toronto area, of retrofitting all these uh, glazed towers because they're breaking down. Um, so why semi-transparent PV? And, when I'm talking about semi-transparent TV, I'm referring uh, mainly to thin film, transparent, or it could be space cells that the light can go through the gaps. Uh, uh, we're focusing mainly on silicon-based and organic cells and skylight windows and owling applications. Uh, the reason that we want to use semi-transparent TV is because when it comes to these huge glazed buildings, we don't need all the sun inside the, the building uh, because it will overheat the building. So we can cut down that amount of solar radiation that is incident into our surface, and at the same time we allow some that will uh, cut down the electricity of lighting by utilizing daylight. And of course, because we're partly shading the facade, we can reduce cooling and heating load. Uh, the other interesting thing is that we can create a net zero energy generator facade. So we can produce actually as much energy as we'll consume into the building. Uh, there you go. So when it comes to a technology that is adapted to a building, there are so many factors that we need to go through and ensure that we'll perform well. First of all, the most important factor for building application is the human factors. So we have to ensure that the technologies that we're going to put into the building will keep our occupants happy. It's a building and it's there for the occupants. So we have to ensure that provides daylight, avoid glare, it will provide view to the outdoors, and of course, thermal comfort. You don't want to have a fully glazed, cold surface emitting you know, uh, cold to the occupants. Of course, there are major issues when it comes to power output, which is the most times where we're focusing. Uh, every building element has a thermal resistance, so we have to go through that. The amount of solar radiation that is transmitted and visible transmitters, and then it comes to technical issues such as structural loads, condensation, acoustic performance, fire protection. So just a very small summary of what is going on in photovoltaic and semi-transparent PV when it's in the building. You have the sunlight that is incident to your surface. Then some of that energy is, tra is transformed to electricity through your PV. But the most of it becomes heat absorbed by PV. 
and some of it will come inside your space as sunlight, which eventually become heat as well. So we have to balance all these into our system. Uh, so semi-transparent will, it's a technology that modulates not only electricity, but heat, daylight, and sometimes even fresh air. Uh, unfortunately, the current market products focusing only on producing high uh, efficiency solar cells and modules. And they're many times forgetting about the heat management, visual and thermal performance, cost, and durability. So you have all these companies that are coming out with BIPV products and semi-transparent products that many times are not suitable for building applications. So you're providing a product that the industry is, is not going to use it. Um, the other issue is that semi-transparent photovoltaics perform in higher temperatures than if you have a free starting PV. And this is because a free starting module will have ambient temperature in both sides, back and front. But when it comes to semi-transparent, the back surface is exposed to indoor temperatures. So the temperature of the PV will be significantly higher. Uh, that's, that's why we need to avoid, when it comes especially to organic uh, application, we need to avoid temperatures above 75 degrees. And one thing that is, some people will say it's a soft criteria, but it's very, very important, is we need to avoid light polarization. I believe that no one would like to be in a building, working in an office building, where the daylight that comes through the window is polarized to blue or strong red or pink you want clear light to come through. So we want to be towards that. Uh, so semi-transparent has to be treated as PV and fenestration system. We need to study the, the, perform the effect into the building, and that is electricity, thermal, comfort, and uh, daylighting. And of course, semi-transparent is a key technology for net zero in these buildings, as Scott referred earlier. Uh, for our work, we have two approaches. It's high efficiency bifacial silicon based and organic cells. And uh, the bifacial silicon base is a short term target. It's something that we know that we can use right now and it's available in the market. And of course, we're taking for organic cells that it's a long term uh, target in the market because we see the potential of that technology. And we want, as soon as we reach uh, relatively high efficiency to be able to take that technology and put it into a building. Uh, so there are two approaches on investigating that. First is through modeling. Uh, so we develop, um, we need to develop modeling that goes and investigates the thermal performance of the cells, of the module, and the effect into the building, and an electrical model and a daily agent model. Of course, as you can understand, all these are interrelated. One is affecting the other one. This is why we came up with one single model that goes and checks the electrical, thermal, and daylight performance in transparent photovoltaics. And something very important that we have to have on mind, when it comes to semi-transparent photovoltaics, we're talking about 80% efficiency in solar efficiencies. And I'm talking about the summation of electricity, heat, and daylight. So some preliminary results you can see here. The analysis uh, for cities of the climatic zone that Halifax, Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto are in. And we investigated two different designs. One design is just the upper part is covered with semi-transparent photovoltaic. The middle section is regular clear glass that allows uh, the occupants to see outside. And the second design is the entire transparent facade is covered with semi-transparent photovoltaic. So if you see the analysis here, um, this is the transmittance of the, uh, the STPV layer and the annual electricity consumption, which is the amount of energy that we consume minus the energy that is produced by the photovoltaics. We see two bathtubs and we see that the, the minimum is around 40 and 50, between 40 and 50 percent transmittance. Um, our models, at the same time, uh, predicted temperatures of 72 degrees. So we're, we see that right now we're quite high temperatures regarding uh, applications for organic cells, and we need to figure out how to uh, uh, deal with the heat man management of that. Uh, another issue uh, that 
we, another way of uh, investigating semi-transparent photovoltaics is through experimental work. And experimental work give us a view that of different aspects that we cannot see through simulations. So for our work, we're using the Concordia Solar Simulator. It's actually a, a quite big scale solar simulator that can test full-size modules or even equipment. Uh, it consists of eight uh, specialized metal halide lamps uh, with an artificial sky in front of it. Uh, what an artificial sky does is cuts down the infrared and creates the, um, emulates the cold sky in real situations. Uh, the test specimen can be 2.4 by 3.2 meters. And we have a system next to it, which is an air solar collector to test uh, uh, semi-transparent thermal systems. Um, in addition to that, next to that equipment, there is a two-story high environmental chamber. So you, it's an environmental chamber that you can get in and build an actual residential building or an actual two-story high wall, put your technology up there and see how it performs in temperatures from Arctic all the way to desert from different solar radiation levels and, of course, uh, different humidity. What, is, what we are very excited to show you is that we developed, in order to be able to test all this, we had to develop something that will be able to uh, uh, test and provide us all the values when it comes to thermal, electrical, and daylighting performance. So we built a, a prototype uh, calorimeter, which actually it's a well-insulated box that you put into the bigger environmental chamber, to, let's say to minus 30. This is well insulated and we ensure that there is no uh, heat losses from the back of that calorimeter to the outdoors. The way to do that is to maintain these two sides the same temperature, so there is no energy flow. Then you illuminate your specimen that is placed on the front of your uh, box and you can define very quickly what are the properties and measure anything you like. So uh, we have some preliminary results that comes uh, to a semi-transparent module. So this is a typical module. Then we add an air gap on the back and a low E coating. Low E coating is a pyrolytic coating that we put in a double glaze in the inside surface to cut down the infrared radiation exchange between the cold surface and the hot surface that is inside. That way we increase the thermal performance of the window. So the process is very simple. We have our prototype semi-transparent. We put it up into the calorimeter and we illuminate it and we get the full characterization of our prototype. So uh, some results, some preliminary results uh, were done with uh, using micromorph tandem cell prototypes of 1.4 by 1.1 meters, which is a typical uh, facade dimension. And what is very, very interesting is that we were able to see things that we weren't able to see through simulations. Uh, there is a differential backseat temperature of 15 degrees between the top and the bottom of the window. We believe this is because of that air gap. There is air that is circulated here in this stratification. So the hot air goes up and the cold air stays down. And that affects the cell temperature. Uh, on the other side, we have a five degree temperature uh, difference between center and sides. And this is probably because of the frame of the PV. So the metallic frame, or even if it's well insulated frame, will affect the cell temperature. Uh, the, the, the tests uh, have performed between minus 5, 5, and 15 degrees. And when it came to 15 degrees, we saw 62 degrees uh, temperature into the cells. Um, so a very quick summary. Uh, we have to change our, the way we see same transparent PV. It's not a PV module. It's not fenestration system. It's both together. So we have to come up with solution to satisfy uh, both industries and, of course, the market. Uh, very important thing, as I said, is to avoid light polarization. It's OK if we have colored, same transparent PV when you have it, let's say, in an atrium, where people just go there and relax. But in a working environment, it will not be 
acceptable. Uh, we saw differential backseat temperatures of 15 degrees. Uh, heat management is very important, so we have to avoid temperatures above 75 degrees. And so far, we saw that we can reach these temperatures very easily for Montreal climate or Ottawa Montreal climate. Imagine if you go to Miami, what will happen? And if you want to develop a product that will be suitable for the Eastern Canada market, then you should be able to develop solar PV cells that have, sorry, the solar transmitters of the PV layer should be somewhere between 40 and 50 percent. Uh, at that point, I would like to thank Photovoltaic Innovation Network for supporting that work. Uh, it's a collaboration between Concordia Laval and Waterloo University. Our partners, Unicell and NextPower, for providing us the products and helping us on building the prototypes, and for the uh, partly financial support from Astri through the Grant in Aid Award.